Come on, boom! That's it, good. Right. Good, 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 Hey Kobe, you alright man? My neck. Your neck? Alright, sit still now, don't move. Anything else hurt? No. No? You have any numbness in your arms and legs? Yes. Yes, you do? Hey Smitty, can you get Sandy please? Sandy. John, what's up, buddy? My neck. Neck's bothering. Hey, numbness or tingling in your hands or your feet? Yes. Yes, in both? Yes. All right, lay nice and still. Cause you keep stabilization. One of you guys, please have coach call 911, please. Have you ever responded for an injured student athlete? Think about it. How did the call go? Did you work seamlessly with the athletic training staff on scene, or could the call have gone more smoothly? What if I told you how you can work with school officials specifically athletic trainers, to make sure that every call goes smoothly. I'm Dr. Mike Rehart, Chairman of the PEHSC Medical Advisory Committee. I'm here today to give you some simple tips on how to improve interactions with athletic trainers and other school personnel. What's the deal? Cause is gonna hold your head. You don't help us at all, you lay nice and still, okay? No moving your head, no shaking your head either direction. If you want to talk to us, you can talk, but open your mouth to do it, don't shake your head, okay? Lay nice and still. Hey guys. How you doing? Good. This is John. Hi John, I'm Bill. The EMS is my partner Keith. John has a neck injury. Okay. So like we talked about before, we're going to stick him on a backboard. It doesn't matter. He's got numbness and tingling in his hands and his feet. Okay. So we're going to try and get him out of here. We're going to take his mask off now. Super. And then we'll get him on the backboard. We're going to use a scoop stretcher. Okay. Give a good airway. He's talking and He's got a good pulse, but he has some numbness and tingling in his hands and his okay. feet. What happened? John, you remember what happened? He doesn't remember what happened. I, we were watching the drill, so he was uh, he was hit, has head down, so he's uh, was in a position where he's going to get hurt. So okay, John, there's no movement out of you. Okay, you lay nice and still. We're going to put your arms. We'll do all the movement for you. Don't help us. Okay. So we're going to bring this litter in, and scoop you up, and then we're going to put you down on a backboard, and then we're going to. Strap you down to the backboard, okay? But no helping. Just be a rag help. Got it? Okay. John, right? Okay, this just goes underneath you, okay? Just a little bit more. Alright, John, ready? One, two, three. Good deal. Don't move, don't move. Alright, John? Anything changed? Still have numbness and tingling of feet in your hands? Any changes? No trouble breathing or anything? Your arms are getting strapped down. Okay, going up. Gonna go up in the air. All right, John, take care, man. That call went well, but why? There are a few reasons. First, you probably noticed that the EMS crew and athletic trainer had an open and ongoing communication for the duration of the call. The EMS crew recognized that the athletic trainer is a specially trained medical professional who initiated patient care. An athletic trainer's education includes, at a minimum, a bachelor's degree with a major in athletic training, and over 70% have their master's degree or doctorate. The athletic trainer knew they would be transferring care to the EMS crew and prepared a succinct informational report to provide when they arrived. The EMS crew and athletic trainer worked together to move the patient from the field to the ambulance using an already established procedure. As there is variation between EMS protocols and AT standards of care, items such as use of backboard and equipment removal should be discussed both at the preseason meeting and reviewed prior to each sporting event where EMS is standing by. Before the athletic season even begins, officers or other representatives from the EMS agency and the athletic trainer and their support staff should sit down and have an open dialogue 
to discuss important considerations for the upcoming athletic year. It is a fact that athletic trainers who scheduled preseason meetings with the EMS personnel had significantly fewer conflicts of care during the season. Specific topics that should be covered include getting to know one another, including background and experience, to open communication, review of the emergency action plan for both practice and game venues, as well as routine and life-threatening emergencies, delineation of roles of the athletic trainer, EMS personnel, and other staff, Discussion of equipment removal from the student athlete and when it should be performed, including tools available for removing face masks from helmets. How patient transfer of care should be handled and when the care transfer should occur. Discussion of spinal care procedures, including addressing the variation between EMS and athletic training protocols. Consider doing a combined training session with ATs and EMS personnel. Go to the game and practice venues and review the layout. In addition to the preseason meeting, EMS personnel on standby for an athletic event should meet with the athletic trainer prior to the start of the game and briefly go over the topics covered in the preseason meeting. This short meeting should serve as an extension to the preseason meeting and should focus on items specific to the venue, such as ingress and egress considerations. It can also bring EMS personnel who are unable to attend the preseason meeting up to speed on proper procedures that have already been agreed upon by the EMS agency and athletic trainers. AT should review how the EMS crew will be summoned to the specific location within the venue and how they will access the patient, such as discussing specific hand signals used to communicate between the AT and EMS crew. In EMS, many situations are out of our control. We need to plan for events that we know are happening and prepare to respond for an injured student athlete. Pre-planning and working with school personnel will greatly increase the chances of a successful outcome for the patient. Athletic trainers and EMS personnel have the same goal in mind, to ensure the student athlete receives the best possible care. Thank you for your commitment to providing excellent care to our student athletes in Pennsylvania.